We're back to the Neil Haley show, and I'm so excited to welcome race car driver Robbie Foley. Robbie, thanks for stopping by, man. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? And uh, yeah, likewise, thanks for having me. Oh, man. You know, it's it's an interesting journey, isn't it, in your uh, career as a race car driver to see where you are today, right? It's been a process, but it, an exciting process. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been uh, about 12 years now since I kind of hit go, I guess, on uh, on this on this pursuit, but, uh, yeah, it's been a great journey. All right. So tell me, was it always your dream that you wanted to race? Yeah, it was definitely like a, a pipe dream or, um, just, you know, when I was a kid, I, I, it's all I dreamed about. It's all I thought about. Uh, it was kind of like for a lot of young kids, they want to be an astronaut, a firefighter. Uh, I wanted to be a race car driver. I never saw it as attainable, but it was always my far out there, uh, pipe dream for sure. Okay, so let's kind of like uh, jump into specifically enough your big break. What do you think it was when, because it's it's not an easy process, right, to become a professional race car driver. It's a lot of competition. You got to get sponsorship. There's so much more than people really understand about the, in the industry. Yeah, for sure. I think there were two two main events, one of which is just how I, how I kind of decided I was going to pursue this when I, I had a bad leg injury playing football when I was 14. Um, and from there, I could no longer really play sports, traditional sports like baseball, football. I didn't walk for about a year and a half. And at that point, I decided, all right, I'm going to give this a try. Um, and that was kind of step one. I, I first drove a car uh, with Skip Barber. And luckily in their system, if you won um, championships within their system, they would pay for your next level. Um, so to your point back about sponsorship and, and things like that, racing is incredibly expensive and the money has to come from somewhere to get you to a level to where somebody wants to hire you basically. Um, so I won about $500,000 in scholarship from Skip Barber, which allowed me to kind of keep moving up. The end of that road was a, a contract scholarship with Mazda um, in 2016. Uh, from there, I would say kind of the next turning point or the next big break was um, kind of meeting the right people at the right time that were starting a new team. I then moved basically into a newer kind of category of car and prototype racing. And from there, right place, right time, I met uh, my current boss, who I still drive for now, Will Turner, um, who owns Turner Motorsport, which is a BMW race team that's been around for 20 years. And through my kind of relationship with him and driving for him, I was then picked up by BMW. So um, it was definitely a lot of hard work, a lot of, um, you know, performance, like performing when you need to, winning when you need to, but also at the same time, you know, certainly some right place, right time circumstance. So very lucky and, and thankful to be in a position I am today. And uh, it's definitely been a long road. Absolutely long road, but it's a, a worth a road worth travel. Now, when you talk about, you know, Robbie, the whole process of, of racing and everything, what kind of racing? Because people probably don't understand. They hear about Indy cars. They hear about all these others. And they don't know all the different racing sports that are out there. It's not just one type of car. Yeah, exactly. So I race in what's called um, the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship uh, for BMW and Turner Motorsport, um, which is basically uh similar to indycar and and f1 in terms of the tracks that we drive we drive on road courses not ovals um but it's where all the auto manufacturers compete with cars that resemble their street cars so i drive for bmw i drive a bmw m4 gt3 which is the race car version of the street car m4 that you could buy um so we compete against porsche ferrari aston martin lamborghini audi all these major manufacturers all build these cars to compete in endurance races. Um, our shortest race is a hundred minutes. Our longest race is 24 hours. So wow. um, we, we have two of what you would call the major endurance races in the world. <clears throat> one of, sorry, one of which is the <clears throat> Rolex 24 in Daytona, which is in January every year, Sebring 12 hour. Uh, we have a race called Petit Le Mans road Atlanta, which is 10 hours long. So these races um, are places where manufacturers want to enter cars to kind of prove their concepts and and compete against the other big brands in in long endurance races. So uh, 
races like the Le Mans 24 hour in France is a worldwide um, well-known race, not in our championship, but similar kind of style. So uh, every car you see in, in our races are manufacturer related. Um, and, and I drive for BMW. So let's think about that. Like this is probably better for, you know, this is really where sponsorship comes in, right? You know, the, everyone that goes and sees these, all these cars race, they want to buy them, right? It's not going to be to the level of racing, but you have the greatest cars com- competition in the world. If you're a fan of specific cars. Yeah, absolutely. Like there's, we have some great hardcore BMW fans equally. There's, there's fans of every brand, um, which attracts a lot of people. And then beyond that, it's, it's relatable to the consumer. So um, that, that attracts people as well. And then our product on track is, is good racing. And, and that brings a lot of fans as well, but uh, there's definitely uh, it's, it's a multifaceted kind of, kind of sport where in IndyCar, you have all the same cars and NASCAR, there's different brands, but they all kind of look the same. Our cars look wildly different from each other. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's one of the things that's very cool and attracts a lot of fans. My uh, actor friend, Antonio Sabato Jr. said to me, he said, Neil, I, when I, we were talking on the phone, he says, can you hook me up with somebody? I want to start racing. <laughs> so I'll have to connect you to Antonio. Yeah. He's like, dude, he's like, I need to race in one of these types of, uh, and he, I think he was talking about an event like yours, but I, probably racing for another company, but I just knew the connection. You think an actor would say that, but he's like, Antonio's like, Neil, do it. I said, okay, I have a couple people I've interviewed like that. We just hit it off and built this relationship and go figure. I'm doing a documentary for my comeback into pro wrestling. He says, well, I'm coming back and race car driving, but I I want us to make a movie based on your comeback story in wrestling. I said, really? And then he's talked about the racing. He's just an unbelievable guy. I'll definitely have to connect you, Rob, because who knows what types of synergy. It's all about connections, right? But I mean, the whole process of sponsorship, I think it's so cool. You know, is there, do you see yourself racing in any other types of races? Cause kind of define some of the other races out there. You know, you're in this field. Do you see ever go, going indie? Do you ever see you driving other types of cars? Yeah, I, w- I would love to give it a try. Um, there, there is certain drivers that are able to kind of compete in all kinds of cars. I would love that opportunity. Um, I think if you think about great drivers over the history, drivers like Mario Andretti competed NASCAR, IndyCar, sports car, kind of everything. Um, it's less common these days because I think everybody's gotten so advanced with simulation and with other things that um, drivers are quite specialized and so good at what they're doing now that it's difficult to to jump ship and and try something else. I would love to to run the Indy 500. It's one the biggest or one of the biggest races in the world, um, and I would love to to drive Indy cars too. Um, I, I really, I've always dreamed of doing what I'm doing now. That's kind of where my focus was racing sports cars. I've always been very passionate about the races that we get to compete in. Um, Rolex 24, Sebring 12 hour, those historic races, but um, I would love to give dirt racing a try. So everything I do for those listening is on asphalt on tracks, but there's also dirt tracks, totally different style would be uh, a lot of fun to try. So um I would love to be kind of a multi-purpose driver, let's say, or a complete driver. Uh, it's less common these days, but uh, I think if I had to pick one, I would say the Indy 500. All right. You just make it happen, right, Robbie? Just keep going. And uh, how did you how, how did you do it in the WeatherTech Sports Car Championships? Yeah, so in about 2015, 2016, I was racing in a series uh, that supported it. Um, so on these race weekends, we're the main race, but we have other races leading up to it that are called support races, basically, which is cool. Gives other people a place to race in front of the big crowds and um, gives the fans lots of lots of racing to watch. So I was uh, I was on a Mazda scholarship kind of contract at the time, and I was what's called a spotter for their major big team that's racing in the same place I'm racing now. So I was basically part of the crew. I would go watch on a certain part of the track and I would spot, meaning I would tell the drivers what to expect if there was a crash or how to avoid it. You're basically like an extra set of eyes. Um, in that, in doing that, I met some people that uh, basically were moving to start another team. Um, I then through them, they gave me a shot to drive 
and I did my first IMSA WeatherTech Series race in 2018. I did the Rolex 24 hour at Daytona, which is probably our Super Bowl biggest race of the world. Um, and in that same year, I met my still boss to this day, Will Turner, who runs Turner Motorsport, the team I race for. Um, so that period of time was kind of my uh, first foray into into the, the major series in IMSA. And then um, through racing for Will, uh, I then got picked up by BMW. He's been a BMW team for 20 years. Um, so I got picked up by BMW kind of through my relationship with Will and uh, been racing in, in IMSA ever since. Awesome. What is your biggest, uh, have you won? How many races have you won in your career? Um, in total, it's hard to count. Um, I would say major races, let's say IMSA races, uh, IMSA WeatherTech races and GTD. I think it's eight or nine now. Um, but uh, in total, it's probably just over 50. Um, but yeah, always trying to win every week. That's the hard thing about racing is uh, you you lose more than you win. Even the best drivers in the world lose more than they win. Um, so, uh, yeah, we finished second last week in Long Beach, California. All right. Trying to, uh, try to do one better next week. Hey, what do you think, the last question, just preparation-wise, what do you think are the biggest challenges preparing as a driver every week if you're racing every week? Yeah, so in in my style of racing, it's a, it's a different type of track every week, um, which I guess is similar for many um, but it's, uh, just the way that we set the cars up for different kind of tracks, the car will drive subtly, very different at each track. So you have to keep up with that. And now I'm, I'm more of a veteran than a, a rookie type of a driver. So I understand, and I know what to expect, but initially when I started, um, just how the car drives at different tracks and how to adapt to that. All right. We appreciate it, Robbie. Best place to find information on you. Where can we go? Yeah, just anywhere at, at Robbie Foley. My uh, my Instagram is actually Foley Racing RFR, but uh, you can find me just with my name probably um, all over social media. And then uh, our IMSA races are normally televised on NBC or an NBC affiliate network. So USA or we're always on Peacock, uh, but but our, our big races will be on network TV. So you can, uh, can find us there. Sounds good, Robbie. Thanks for stopping by. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. You're listening.